Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chef Manetti, and today we're going to do actually two different styles. We're going to do a smoke and a barbecue style pork rib. Um, I'm going to explain to you sort of that there's a combination between the two, but I want you to understand what the principles are on um, the difference between a barbecuing and smoking. Um, the general purpose of of doing the pork ribs is you want them to come out uh, tender and succulent. As you can see I've already gotten these marinated and then all I really actually did was I pulled off. There's a membrane that sits on the back here and I just use a little paper towel, pick up the skin and pull it off. Clean it up a little bit you know by scraping some of the fat off. You just grab the fat and you just can scrape it off and you can see how that comes out. And then you just flat it all flat. On both sides these are pretty well cleaned as you can see. Now what I like to do to open up the pores in the meat to make the, the either the seasonings that you use or if you're going to use some sort of a wet rub the way to open that up is by using something that has a vinegar base. I like to use either a yellow mustard if I'm going to use more of the dry rubs with maybe your garlic or if you're going to do something sweet where you're going to use more of like say a tomato based you know, like your bullseye type dressings, and I would use something with make like a honey mustard. It's got a little bit of sugar in it already, and it sort of, you know, layers a different type of a flavor to it. So what I do at that point is I just squeeze a little bit of the mustard onto the, onto the rib, and then just with the, with a, with a pastry brush, basically, I just paint that on both sides. And then at that stage, I'm ready to go ahead and do my dry rubs. Um, dry rubs are consist basically of some of your general um, things that you always see in any kind of rub. We're looking at some garlic, granulated garlic, uh, granulated onion, dried mustard, a little bit of brown sugar. I like using the smoked paprika. You can use regular papri paprika. Um, chili, this is chipotle, has the chipotle flavor to it, so it's a little bit more spicier than and smokier than others. Um, you could put a little bit of salt in it. I try not to recommend using too much salt. I mean, um, what we're going to be doing this is by layering it, you'll have enough flavor. You don't really need to add the salt too much to this. Um, some of the other things you can do if you don't happen to have these type of ingredients, um, you can use uh, a, vi a vinegar on the top of this first before you put your dry rubs on, and that will open up the pores in the meat too. It has another tendency too to sort of give it a little bit of a flavor and at the same time kind of tenderizes the meat a little bit at the same time. If you don't happen to have any of these ingredients, the the best standby is your Lowry's garlic salt and just regular black pepper. That'll work just fine. Um, I like to do is make my own rub. Um, I have actually put it together. Um, <laughs> I kind of change it around every time. The reason why I'm laughing is because I add this on it because every time I mix it, it's a little bit different. It's not always the same, but it always comes out really good. All right, so at this point right here, uh, as you can see, after getting all the spices rubbed onto here, this will go into the refrigerator and marinate anywhere from an hour up to overnight. That depends on what you have um, planned. And then the next stage is going to be um, going into the oven. Hi, right. I'm back again. These have been marinating for about three hours now in the refrigerator, as you can see. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get these things ready for a slow cook in the oven. And this is one technique that I highly recommend, particularly for people who don't have a lot of time to be outside cooking. This is something easy you can just, you know, do. Is basically, you're gonna take your rib out, sheet aluminum foil, you're gonna wrap them. And just tuck it in. It doesn't have to be all the way on the bottom because this plate's already on the bottom. What we're going to be doing here is basically, is this is a muscle tissue. It goes around the rib cage of the foot. Basically, it's, it's a pretty tight muscle. And the worst thing you can do is hit this with high heat. High heat, what's going to do is make the protein molecule get stiffer. And what we want to do is we want to relax that. And by relaxing it, we want to bring slow heat into this and relax that, bring out the natural juices, and create this incredible flavor in this by pulling out the, um, the flavors out of the bone and out of the fat tissues and bring it into the meat itself. And by how we create that with all the seasonings we have on here, and like I said, the vinegar based mustards and stuff that we already put on is depending on which one you used, this is all these things will be enhanced. Another thing I forgot to mention in the, um, in the very beginning was that you can buy these already pre-made 
barbecue spices that have all the stuff that we talked about already and these work just fine you know find the one you like you can use it but if if you really want to get into it there's one on the web it's called JJ's rub it's basically the same one everybody uses in the in in the barbecue world and you can adjust to what you're if you like a little more heat you can add a little bit more peppers whatever you'd like to do but like I said you can try to find these in the store these are the fast way to go but it's kind of fun to make your own so you kind of you can tweak them the way you like so at this point this is ready to go into the we have an oven right now that's preheated for 225 degrees and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this in this and this is great about it to set it forget it I put this in here and you can really I say two hours minimum but you could really go up to two and a half three hours if, if you forget about it. it's not going to hurt nothing. at this temperature nothing's going to get overcooked um, when you pull these out you'll we'll see it will pull away from the bone a little bit so at this stage right now and I can go ahead and I can relax and do what I want to do and I don't have to worry about these burning or anything and at this same point is that that meat right now is getting relaxed it's sort of like getting massaged in the oven and they're going to come out they're going to be cooked but they're not going to look right to eat yet we're going to actually put, add some more caramelization to it and bring some more other flavors to it so we're building layers again we've talked about that in other videos i've done is building layers and that's what's being done right now hi um we're back here at the barbecue you know i just put the other ribs in the oven i told you i was going to do two sets of ribs today well this is the actual authentic way of true barbecue and that's what we're doing this is a true barbecue here and as you can see we have a firebox on this side which has our heat source and what we're going to do is going to be this is called indirect heat so we have this box and what we do is heating this upper box which has no charcoal in it and you can see I have a rack in for our ribs and at this point let me bring this back down you want to make sure that you're right in about the 220 to 225 range in this box, this upper box, at all times. You don't want to go over 250, um, that way it tightens up the muscle too much. So you want to cook this for about four hours. So what I'm going to do right now is going to put this on there. Let's move this out of the way. We'll use that later. And we're going to have a bone side down. Okay. Put that on there. We'll shut this hood down. You can see the smoke's coming into this through this hole down here. And we'll keep that at about 225 would be perfect. You can keep it at that. At this stage is when I want to start using some of the wood chips. A lot of people wait an hour or so. I totally believe that right now this is when the meat doesn't have any type of bark on it. Right now it's going to soak up a lot of the flavor from this wood. Um, I like to use my, my favorite type of wood to use in something like this is either a, a pecan if you can find it. Uh, cherry would work great. Any kind of a fruit uh, type of a tree or a nut type of tree would work real well with a pork product. Um, if I had to, I'd be, uh, I, think, I think that maybe the, the mesquite's a little bit too, too tough for this type of meat and I think that hickory might be a little bit too much too. So at this point what we're going to do is we're going to add some of these wood chips to this fire. And you'll see actually I'm not going to throw it in through the door. Okay. Throw in a few in here. We'll put in a couple more like that. And maybe a handful or so like that. Let's close this drawer back up. And now what's going to happen is this will generate a lot more smoke and give it some flavor. And I'll kind of do that maybe three or four more times throughout this four hour cooking time so right at this present time I'm going to set my timer for 60 minutes and then I'll let this thing get back up the temperature which it is doing and um, I'll check it in one hour and probably put some more wood chips in. Alright it's been two hours now and now we're going to take which I'm going to call the garlic ribs because the other ones are going to have a barbecue sauce these are just going to have straight up garlic or just a dry rub and not the uh, tomato based rub sauce that I usually put on some of my ribs. It's going to be the other ones that are already outside. So, that's what they look like when they come out of the oven. Now what I want you to notice here is you can see how the meat is now starting to pull away from the bone. This is basically cooked right now. You could actually eat it right now, but as, as you can see it's not very appealing. So what we're going to do right now is now we're going to go through the smoking process, get a little bit more layered and more other flavors to it get some color to it and bring up the presentation too. Um, these juices that you happen to see in here are excellent 
to use as I like to do is make my own uh, sauce when I do the tomato base and what I just basically do is I pour this into a pot like that and then I do is I add a couple of smashed pieces of garlic to the pot a little bit of this apple cider vinegar not that much and then like you've already got this poured out so it's easier than squeezing it and bringing in some sort of, you know, just any kind of your typical barbecue sauce. It could be bullseye, anything that you happen to like on sale. It doesn't make a difference. But really adding the apple cider vinegar really changes the consistency. It gives a little more uh, tang to it. Bring this bowl and kind of reduce it by about maybe a third. Maybe a third less of this liquid. Bring that to a boil and then bring that down. We'll do that at a later time. Okay, so let that cook. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to bring this back out to the barbecue. 